I am honored as part of the Sea Shepherd crew and the Martin Singh crew to have been invited in your territory. It's really an honor for us to be a part of this fight next to you, all salmon protectors. I protect what's in the ocean because what's in the ocean protects me. So on the west coast, our keystone species is salmon. When I think about wild salmon, my heart thinks of my father and my grandfather. Sakai, Suha, Chinook, you name it, it was there. And everywhere you went here, there was salmon, everywhere. This place right here, right where we're sitting, all the way up the inlet, used to have sockeye jumping everywhere, all along the water here. Because these farms have been over here for about 30 years, we don't see that fish jumping here anymore. And I'm here because of that. There were six of us from Tla'ukwaiat that uh, boarded the Creative Salmon Farms, which is in Tla'ukwaiat territory. So we needed to see what was going on in the waters, and we had the support of our Tai Hatwish Hayuia, which is the head chief of Tla'ukwaiat Nation. We decided to board the farms with the support of the Sea Shepherd. This goes against our culture's teachings of respect for salmon. And salmon are meant to be born in the river. In our language, a salmon farm is called a matlasu with, and it means an underwater prison. There's a lot we don't see because it's under the surface of the water, but when you peer down into those pens long enough, you start to see some very unhealthy fish. What I saw for myself are a lot of very sick fish. There's a lot of young fish that are not the creative salmon fish swimming around in these pens that are not supposed to be in there. Fish with big lesions on their skin. There's open wounds, and I saw some salmon with uh, completely crooked spines. I saw a salmon with no tail. This is not the way that a salmon is meant to live. These are cesspools. We need to remove these from our waters. And after seeing what I saw today, I'm even more convinced of that. They've been flowering it up for many years now. That creative salmon is so healthy compared to Cermak. But when you look at the footage here, we've got a serious problem here. I'm looking at a small school of juvenile salmon in the pens. From the shape of the tail and the size, uh, yeah, these are juvenile salmon that are in the pens. That's never been documented on No, we saw wild salmon outside of the pens, but we didn't see smolts actually in the pens. Mm. So, uh, so this is the smoking gun, eh? One of many. We can't be blinded anymore by, you know, what industry and, and government is saying that this is okay, it's, it's, it's healthy, it's not healthy. It's the images and, and you know, these, these are the facts. You know, before this, all we heard was that, you know, it was, it's a safe industry, you know, it's not harming. When you look at the fish go by on the screen, you can see a lot of them have lice. Uh, so they're over their limit. They've been telling everybody they don't have lice, so it's not a problem, so nothing has to be done. But they do have lice. And so these lice are reproducing and they're infecting the juvenile salmon, just like the Atlantic salmon farms. The only way that they'll follow you is if you lead by example. Put action to your words. Everything is one, everything is connected. Showing that we could stand together and hopefully get these fish farms out. What we've seen today, on these farms, the massive amounts of herrings that are there and all those juvenile Chinook salmons and other salmons that are coming out of the rivers that wind up in that place, they never get released out of there. But 30 years of operations like that, what we saw today, it's no wonder there are no more, no more wild salmon coming up in their numbers not the way they did. I know for, for, for the future, for our future generations that we're going to be in a better place uh, because of these actions.